In 2018, Nature Magazine published an article that presented a grim environmental outlook for the mass adoption of Bitcoin as an investment and payment vehicle. It was proposed that if the cryptocurrency persists at a similar rate of adoption as other broadly adopted technologies, it could single-handedly produce enough CO2 emissions to push global warming above 2 degrees Celsius within less than three decades. It's well understood that the Bitcoin network consumes enormous amounts of power, but what exactly is the nature of this consumption and how does it correlate to its growth, value, and ultimate adoption? Beyond the speculation and the illusion of value being pulled from seemingly nothing, there is a very real cost to producing and using Bitcoin. The power consumption of the Bitcoin network is a direct result of the mechanism by which it establishes trust to its participants. Bitcoin was developed to create a decentralized electronic currency system, and since the direct transfer of assets is not plausible electronically, information now becomes the store of value. But unlike the traditional concept of a commodity, there is no actual definition of an object that represents a Bitcoin. Rather, the network operates on a ledger that is accepted by all participants. This ledger contains the entire transaction history of the Bitcoin network, representing the changes of ownership of amounts of a definitionless entity called Bitcoin since its genesis in 2009. This shared ledger is maintained by thousands of computers worldwide called nodes, operating on a peer-to-peer -peer network. Each node keeps a separate copy of the entire ledger, and combined, they form the public permissionless voting system that validates every transaction. When a transaction occurs, the sender's balance from a previous Bitcoin transaction is transferred to one or more public recipients of an asymmetric cryptographic key pair. These key pairs consist of a public key and a private or secret key, forming the mechanism of ownership. On the Bitcoin network, addresses mathematically derived from these public keys are used for convenience. The transaction is then signed with the sender's private key, and due to the nature of asymmetric encryption, anyone can verify that this signature was created with the sender's private key using only their public key. This, in effect, provides cryptographic proof that the transaction was created only by the owner of the private key. Once a transaction is created, it's sent to the closest node where it's subsequently distributed throughout the network. Some of these nodes participate in updating the shared ledger in an integral process known as mining. In mining, a node selects a collection of newly broadcasted transactions, validates their signatures and accounting, and creates a new block from them. It's common for a transaction to send out an amount that is lower than its source balance. This difference is treated as a transaction fee that is collected by the mining node, and it serves as an incentive for miners to include a transaction within its next block creation. Furthermore, a special transaction known as a block reward is added to the block as an incentive mechanism for miners to bill upon the network by block creation. Each mining node can independently choose which transactions will appear in a new block, but only one can earn the authority to add their block to the chain of existing blocks that every participant on the network accepts as the Bitcoin blockchain. The mechanism by which a miner is granted this authority is key to Bitcoin's decentralized nature and simultaneously the root of the immense power draw of the network. When a miner assembles a new candidate block, a random number called a nonce is added. A cryptographic hash function called SHA-256 is then applied to the block. Hash functions convert an arbitrary length of data to a stream of bits of a fixed length, in this case 256 bits. They are not reversible, and changing just a single bit in the source data will dramatically change the resultant hash. In order for a block to be considered valid, a nonce value must be found that produces a block hash that starts with a minimum number of zeros. For example, as I complete the sentence, the last block hash created led with 78 zeros. The only known way to accomplish this task is by repeatedly guessing a nonce value and computing a block hash until one is found that meets the requirement. This mechanism is known as proof of work, and as the leading zeros required increases, more guesses and respective hash checks are needed to find a suitable nonce. Conversely, as the number is reduced, fewer attempts are needed. This effectively creates a throttle to the computational difficulty of creating a new block. Once a valid hash value is found, 
The new block is broadcasted to the rest of the network where it is validated and added to each node's copy of the blockchain. This new block must also contain the hash of a previous block, which effectively grants the node that created it the authority to determine the progression of the blockchain. In cases where multiple nodes are able to create blocks simultaneously, all forks are followed until one wins out in length due to the sheer computing power of all the nodes arriving at a majority consensus of the correct chain path. This cycle of transactions and block creation is designed to go on indefinitely and is regulated by a few key parameters designed into the Bitcoin network. As of February 2021, it takes roughly 90 sextillion hash guesses to create a valid Bitcoin block. A decade earlier, it took only about 180 trillion hash guesses to create a similar block. This dramatic rise in the needed computational power is a direct result of an inbuilt mechanism of the Bitcoin network that raises or lowers the lead zero count requirement of a block hash in order to keep the average creation time of a new block to around 10 minutes. As the ability to calculate more hashes is thrown at the network, the more difficult it becomes for miners to create a new block. Currently, the primary incentive of Bitcoin miners is to capture the reward produced from the creation of a new block. At its inception, each Bitcoin block created rewarded 50 Bitcoin. However, this is halved after the creation of every 210,000 blocks, which takes about four years to complete. As of February 2021, one block reward is worth six and a quarter Bitcoin. Because of this halving, there can only ever be 21 million Bitcoin on the network with the final halving happening approximately by 2140. Though at present, over 88% of all the Bitcoin that can exist have already been mined. As the value of Bitcoin rises, miners collectively unleash more computing power at the network to capitalize from the higher prices. This inherently forces the network difficulty to increase and eventually an equilibrium is reached between the profitability of mining and network difficulty. And within this feedback loop that regulates the network, lies a key link between Bitcoin and the real-world resource, power consumption. Determining the exact power consumption of Bitcoin's public permissionless proof-of-work blockchain is difficult due to the indeterminable nature of the computing hardware used in mining and its corresponding power draw. Mining can be conducted using a vast spectrum of techniques, such as from incredibly inefficient and outdated software miners running on traditional CPUs, all the way to contemporary highly efficient purpose-built hardware based on application-specific integrated circuits. However, despite this large variance in efficiency, it is possible to determine the upper and lower limit of the network's power consumption from its hash rate. The network's total hash rate is an estimate of how many SHA-256 block hash calculations are occurring on the network every second. It's derived from the expected rate of finding a block, the actual rate of finding a block, and the current block creation difficulty. As of February 2021, the total network hash rate has hovered around 150 quintillion block hashes calculated every second globally. This metric is generally presented in terms of terahashes due to its scale. In this case, the total hash rate of the network can be said to be 150 million terahashes a second. The current generation of ASIC hardware consumes around 30 joules of energy to calculate 1 trillion hashes. Because these devices are the most efficient miners on the network, it sets the theoretical lower limit of energy consumption at 4.5 gigajoules per second, or about 40 terawatt hours per year if the current total hash rate is maintained. In reality, the vast majority of mining hardware tends to be a variety of ASIC devices operated by large mining groups that, while efficient, vary significantly. Additionally, there are other energy costs associated with mining, such as cooling and infrastructure maintenance. Because of the implausibility of determining every single contributing factor, several researchers have looked to determine a clearer picture of power consumption from profitability. This approach assumes that all mining participants in the network aim to make a profit and that all new Bitcoin produced by mining must at least be higher on average than the operating cost of mining. By surveying mining revenues, operational costs, and the cost of electricity, a mining operation's power consumption can be determined. From a collection of this data, a more realistic measure of the global cost of the Bitcoin network can be determined. Using this method, several studies done between 2018 and 2021 
had arrived at upper limit figures of around 120 terawatt hours per year, with around 80 terawatt hours per year being estimated to be closest to the real world energy consumption. This magnitude of power consumption is incredibly large and can be easily compared with that of entire nations. Even the most conservative estimate of the network ranks it as high as the 56th most power consuming country in the world, New Zealand. The upper end estimate places it as high as Argentina at 30th place, and the median estimate is similar to that of Chile at 40th place. In 2020 alone, it consumed somewhere between 0.18% and 0.54% of all the energy generated on Earth. Even more astounding is the inherent cost associated with conducting transactions on the Bitcoin network. Over the past five years, each new block added to the blockchain contained an average of 2,109 transactions. At the current best estimate of the network's power consumption levels, each Bitcoin transaction took around 700 kilowatt hours to process. This is the equivalent of powering the average American household for about three weeks. For comparison, it's estimated that the cumulative power consumption of 100,000 Visa transactions is around 149 kilowatt hours. To put this massive difference of efficiency into perspective, the transaction count of the entire Bitcoin network could be processed by Visa using the same amount of energy consumed by just 21 Bitcoin transactions. Further compounding Bitcoin's power consumption issues is the fact that mining hardware must run continuously to be effective. This makes it difficult to employ excess power generation strategically for mining use, effectively making mining consumption a baseline power demand on infrastructure. The same studies used to determine Bitcoin's power consumption had also produced data that located the primary sources of Bitcoin mining, with all studies concluding Chinese dominance. In fact, it's estimated that China single-handedly operates almost 50% of the Bitcoin network, with the nation of Georgia following in second with a little over 25% of all mining, and the US in third place with 11.5%. China's dominance appears to be largely attributed to its cheaper cost of power, dipping to as low as just under 3 US cents per kilowatt hour during the rainy season where hydroelectric power can be leveraged. Georgia, which drives 81% of its power grid with hydroelectricity, also enjoys relatively cheaper power at around 5 to 6 cents per kilowatt hour. However, outside of the limited window of availability for Chinese hydroelectric power, the combined power generation infrastructure of China, the United States, Canada, and Estonia fuels the Bitcoin network predominantly with coal, natural gas, and oil-based fuels. From this, the annual carbon footprint of the Bitcoin network is estimated to be around 37 megatons of carbon dioxide, an amount similar to that of New Zealand, or about 0.1% of the global total. Since the development of Bitcoin, alternative consensus mechanisms have been developed to address the power consumption associated with proof-of-work. For permissionless networks, the most successful to date has been the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, where the power of a vote is not linked to computing power, but rather a verifiable but scarce resource that must be frozen or staked for a period of time. These mechanisms, in practice, use orders of magnitude less energy than the proof-of-work mechanism of Bitcoin. However, despite constant innovation from competing cryptocurrency technologies, as of February 2021, Bitcoin still holds 66% of the total value of all cryptocurrencies, making its growth and sustainability core to the entire technology space. Currently, Bitcoin, along with all cryptocurrencies, are predominantly motivated by price speculation. This speculated value directly drives the incentive of miners and the inherent power consumption of the Bitcoin network. At present, 80% of mining revenue comes from block rewards with the remainder attributed to transaction fees. However, as the block reward decreases over time, it's expected that mining will slowly shift to profiting off fees primarily. It's entirely possible that current speculation will give way to price discovery and eventually an equilibrium between value, mining incentive, and cost of use will settle into a network that consumes far less energy than it does presently. Still, many experts still warn that in its current growth trajectory, it is simply unsustainable for Bitcoin to become a global reserve currency as this would require the network to consume a significant portion of all energy produced globally.